Link Server Overview, Live Meeting with Atlanta Active Directory User Group, Part 1, the one with presence in SharePoint integration. Good morning. My name is Jennifer, and I'll be the English dubber for this presentation made by Fabrizio Volpe, Microsoft MVP on Directory Services. This webcast is the first part of a live meeting held on September 11, 2012, with AADUG, Atlanta Active Directory User Group. Thank you again to Gary Olson and Joshua Kirk for the beautiful opportunity to talk about Link with their user group. The first thing to say is what we have with Link. I'll try to introduce Link Server and then to explain some of the features you have with Link, Presence, the integration you have with SharePoint, Exchange and Office, Instant Messaging, and the mobile clients you're able to use, the conferencing, and so on. And at the end of the presentation, I've also tried to explain the versioning and the licensing of Link. I have to say that you have two licenses to pay. One license is for the server and one license is for the client. And not all people that use Link know that you have to pay twice for the product. I've cut out a part of a presentation that Bill Gates made a couple of years ago on Link 2010. He explained the version of Microsoft about Link and it's a 40 second clip that says a lot of things. Well, Microsoft's about the magic of software and making things work together, allowing everything to be a platform for uh, applications. And when you looked at the PBX, it really sat there by itself. It had its own directory, its own infrastructure. It wasn't connected up to the groups you defined. It didn't have access to your schedule. It couldn't connect up to the, the PC screen in the right way. And so that isolation meant that it wasn't available platform. And actually the end user navigating back and forth. Uh, and as the mobile phone came in, that almost was a third thing. And so software wasn't helping the user in the way we thought it could. With Link, you have different levels. You have the basic functions, instant messaging. Instant messaging is something that you have also in mobile devices. In every client that is able to connect to Link, also with the web interface, web app, and with instant messaging, you have a lot of features such as presence, file transfer, sharing. If you go up, a step up, you have audio and video call, peer to peer. Then you're able to have conferencing, audio and video, and the top step, the last step you're able to take is to use Link as VOIP, voice over IP. So that's something that integrates with PSTN, the traditional lines, and that enables you also to talk with existing VOIP structures such as Cisco with the use of SIP trunks. You often have a scenario in which you have Link and a Cisco VOIP structure, and the two realities work together using the SIP trunk, so you introduce Link as a conference server, and over time, Link switches to be your VOIP server. The first thing is the presence, and I think that's a good idea to show you what I mean with presence using the Link client. I've installed the last version of the client, that's the 2013 preview, but it works also with an old 2010 server infrastructure. When you log on to Link, you give an information to your partners, to your colleagues, that's your status. So for example, now I'm available. So if one of the persons that uses Link in my company wants to talk with me, he knows that he can use the phone or launch a video conference with me because my status is available. Link gives you also the capability to insert a location so people know where you are and what you are doing. If you're in a conference, you're automatically in a busy status and so on. Also, you have an area here where you're able to insert the activities you're doing in this situation at the moment. It's important to say that Link Presence integrates with Outlook. So for example, if I log on to a client that's outside of my domain and I have Outlook, with Outlook Anywhere set up, and I have Link that's running on the internet, so there is no VPN, no direct connection to my, my Microsoft domain, but I'm able to work as a connected person. Presence, I said, and if I try to organize to call for a meeting, here you see live meeting with Link. When the meeting setup opens, you're able to put people inside the meeting and to see if they are available or not. 
if they are online, so you know the presence not only from Link, but also from the Outlook client, and that's an example of the integration. If someone writes a message to me, I'm able to see not only the message in Outlook, but also if the person is online at the moment and it's available, for example, for a fast chat or instant message. That's the typical aspect of a link meeting message. You usually receive an email with a link that you're able to launch to connect to the meeting. And if I put here the name of a person, when the name is checked out versus exchange, you'll see a presence box here that says that the person is offline at the moment. Back to presence. Link takes real-time information about your status. For example, if you're in a video conference, your presence is automatically busy. You don't have to modify your presence manually. Presence is something that you see in Exchange using Outlook and also in SharePoint. So if you have SharePoint, you're able to see persons connected to the server at the moment. I've said that you're able to integrate your link presence with SharePoint. And when you're working on a document, let's say a Word document that's on your SharePoint site collection, you're able to see who modified and who published the document. But you're also able to see if the person is online with link at the moment. The result is that you're able to work online with the person, with the author of the document, for example, and to modify the document with the author online simultaneously. Here you see modified from, I don't know, let's say Fabrizio, and Fabrizio is online, so let's work together on the document. There was a question about why I said that using Link makes it easier to work with SharePoint. It's easier because with Link, you're able to know the status of the person in every moment. So, for example, if I now open a document and I want to work on my document from my house, so I don't know if the person is at the office or he's home, and I don't know if the person I need to work with is available to work with me, it's enough to look at the presence to see if the colleague at the moment is available to work with me. If he wants to work at the moment and is available, and if I see that the status is busy, send an email message. So it's easier because I always know which one is the right tool to work with at the moment to call the person to work with me. I don't know if I've answered the question. The answer was a positive one. SharePoint integration, I said. So SharePoint has also an additional Im important feature for Link. That's the so-called skills-based research. For example, I'm searching for a person that's able to work on a financial document or on financial planning. And if my company uses SharePoint, I'm able to launch a search from Link and to have a list of the people that are able to work on a financial document in the example. And I'm also enabled to pick up the person that's online at the moment. You see in the image, I have two persons that are online at the moment. So I'll launch an instant messaging session, a chat, or a video call with them saying, hi, I need help with a financial document. So Link and SharePoint together enables you to search the right person and to call the right person as fast as possible. In the demo, you see a simple search for a digital media expert in my company. If you want to know more on SharePoint, because I'm certainly not a SharePoint expert, I suggest you use the free resource kit that Microsoft has published some time ago. That's a very good document also for people with little experience on SharePoint. That's an argument that's going to be interesting because SharePoint is gaining market. So Link and SharePoint together is something that's going to be interesting in the next years.